Morning, everyone. Welcome back to our First Corinthians Bible re reflection. Soon to turn into our Second Corinthians Bible reflection. Well, we still got quite a few more chapters to go, but uh, yeah. So this morning we're going through twenty-five through forty of chapter seven. So uh, one of the things that you'll notice here is there's you, we really get a glimpse in, ter in terms of kind of Paul's mindset and expectation. So when we read these things again. With scripture, you have to know the context. You have to know exactly what Paul is addressing, talking about. So a lot of this may seem a little strange, but just to get it, this is, he's expecting Jesus to come back real soon. He's expecting like eternity to wrap things up and, and, and for the, the new heaven and new earth reality to be pretty quick. So um, yeah, you'll start to see this in the text, but it's a little bit long. So let's go ahead and dive in and uh, we'll go from there. So it says, now concerning virgins, I have no command of the Lord, but I give my opinion as one who, by the Lord's mercy, is trustworthy. I think that, <coughs> sorry, mm, that in view of the impending crisis, the end of the world, Jesus coming again, it is well for you to remain as you are. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you marry, you do not sin, and if a virgin marries, she does not sin. Yet those who marry will experience distress in this life, and I would spare you that. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. So essentially, Paul is encourages people like, don't worry about some of this other stuff. Focus on Christ. You know, if you're not married, don't 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 seek out a wife. Or if you are married, you know, focus your life on Jesus, on living for Jesus. You know, if you're you know, if you're rejoicing, like pretend like act like you're not, and and get ready for what's coming. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please his wife. And his interests are divided. You know, there's part of this that's that's a little bit, I don't know. It's kind of it, like it's almost, it's almost offensive, but at the same time, it still kind of makes sense. <laughs> like that Paul's going to this extreme. But anyway. And the unmarried woman and the virgin are anxious about the affairs of the Lord, so that they may be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to put any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and unhindered devotion to the Lord. So Paul is essentially taking the stance of like, like he's single. He doesn't have anybody else to worry about. He's dedicated his life to Jesus and preaching the gospel. And he kind of he kind of sees that as the way to be the most devoted to the Lord. And, you know, even though that, that that might kind of tick some of us off on one hand and the other hand, it's like, well, I mean, if you're not concerned about family, if, if you're not concerned about, you know, taking care of your spouse or your kids or, 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 or doing those sorts of things, you might have a little more time and energy for other things, but yeah, I don't think that that's necessarily better. This is Paul's kind of opinion here. <laughs> and again, when the world is going to end, like he th he is thinking, I can definitely understand why he would write this. So if anyone thinks that he is not behaving properly toward his fiance, if his passions are strong, so it has to be, let him marry as he wishes. It is no sin. Let them marry. But if someone stands firm in his resolve, being under no necessity, but having his own desire under control and has determined in his own mind to keep her as his fiance, he will do well. So then. He who marries his fiance does well, and he who refrains from marriage will do better. <laughs> so again, he's just like, ah. A wife is bound as long as her husband lives, but if the husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes, only in the Lord. But in my judgment, she's more blessed to remain as she is. And I think that I too have the spirit of God. So again, Paul essentially saying, it's okay to be married, but I really think that if you're single, then you can do God's work. A little bit more or their devotion to the lord gets a little stronger okay i'm just kind of curious i would love to see the reaction of all of you at home watching this just like i think you got a bone to pick with paul here as i do I'm just like yeah okay 
that's 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 interesting that you think that but anyway different world different place different motivation again we read this and say okay well they were expecting the end to come we don't read this and say oh geez this is what we need to do now um so yeah kind of one of those fascinating passages of scripture where people can pull pieces out of it and it makes paul sound extreme or you know the gospel seem warped in some way but it's like nah it's just context so anyway let's close with the word of prayer here good gracious god we give you thanks for this day for our relationships in our life with our family and friends and just help us to be devoted to those we love as well as devoted to you in jesus name we pray amen okay take care and we will see you guys on monday